So it's Iggy Pop on Six Music, and as promised earlier on in the program, hopefully we have uh, a member of Coldplay on the line. In fact, it should be Guy Berryman. Hello, Guy. Hello, Steve. How are you? Oh, not too bad. I'm so pleased that's worked. Uh, now, listen, <laughs> uh, they've, they've kept it from me, but, uh, uh, apart from the fact that uh, I believe you're in Italy. Is that true? Um, I, I'm in a place called Locarno, which I thought was in Italy, but right. it is in fact in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so your geography is about as good as mine. Oh, it's shocking! <laughs> but Locarno does that not sound like an Italian place to you? It sounds like it should be in Scotland, Locarno. Think about that. Yes, right? it could be. Yeah. Uh, it could be. Um, it could be seen that way also. But Do you no, know I'll tell you something. It was amazing that we drove from um, from Milan to Locarno today, and it was the most beautiful drive i think i've ever had in my life is it i mean but these drives uh, i thought you drove overnight a lot of bands but uh, no you drove during the day no it was just a couple of hours so we right. we, we thought it was pretty 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 spectacular scenery and lots of tunnels through mountains as well oh it sounds like some of those films from the 60s i'll tell you what it was like it was uh, it was exactly like the the opening scene uh, of the the italian job you know where he's yeah. driving around all that sort of uh, yeah. those windy roads it's a bit like that wow i mean do you find i mean do you i know it sounds ridiculous but do you actually learn much about the countries that you're going through i suppose it must be a great experience join cold place see the world um yeah but unfortunately, we don't learn anything, really. I mean, mm. if I was more vigilant, I'd sort of make a bit more of an effort to uh, sort of go and find out a bit more sort of local information and history. But it's usually so sort of whistle stop that, you know, we could be in any city or any country anywhere, you know, which is which is really bad. But, of course, we have days off, you know, every now and again. So it's nice to sort of do a bit of exploration mm. on those. Well, we now know where Locarno is. That's something you'll be well, able to take back with do. you. Yeah, here we go. So, uh, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the week uh, you've just uh, had. Uh, where have you been then on your travels over the last few days? Um, ah, uh, you're asking that question, <laughs> yeah, aren't you? Yeah. You must, you must remember some of it. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. I've got somewhere in my back pocket. Oh no, it doesn't have a list on it. Well, we've been to, among other uh, places. We've been to Munich. Yep. We've been to Verona, where we played in um, a Roman amphitheatre, which was, I think, the best venue we've ever played in. Really? Ever. It was just, it was li like literally going back in time. You know, you could almost, you know, you could almost just imagine the uh, the Christians and the lions fighting. Um, with uh, with uh, the main man at the back, Caesar, yes. Caesar is displeased. Can you, yes. Just imagine if you come back on for the encore. No, throw them. <laughs> Caesar is displeased. They have they have, they, have, they haven't done uh, they haven't done fix you yet. Let's have their heads off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a bit like that. Um, it was quite it was quite amusing actually because they'd had an opera in there the night before. So when we when we came to sort of load all of our stuff in, there was all these sort of gold owls, giant gold tigers, sort of being sort of coming out of the. Uh, the venue it was like walking into a sort of carry-on film or something. I was very disappointed they didn't let us keep one of the uh, the gold owls, the giant gold owls, on stage. Actually, <laughs> what what are you using as a stage set? Is it uh, do you have? I mean, two or three trucks following you around with uh, loads of big lighting rigs, or are you keeping yeah, it quite yeah, minimal? Yeah, it's pretty. There's a hell of a lot of stuff that has to go around with us these days. As you say, I think there is sort of three three huge trucks, which is just. Purely for the stage, then of course we've got all of our equipment, and then the lineup. It, it always amazes me when I sort of, you know, swan up to the venue at three or four o'clock in the afternoon that there's a, you know, a whole stage that's been built with lights and and everything set up ready to go for us. We really have got an absolutely fantastic crew, and and you know everyone has to work, you know, extremely hard just to put the show on each day. So it's like a a small miracle happens every day. So how uh, how long have you got um, before you're on stage? Uh, this evening? Yeah. Um, I think about an hour or so. Okay. And um, just uh, very quickly before we let you go then, um, what have you picked up as mementos along the way? Have you done any uh, mm. shopping, tourist or I otherwise? Actually. No? Right. Now, in, so, in a, so next time we talk to you, I want you to have bought a bit of tat. Okay. A bit of tat. I, I did, oh, well, if you're talking about tat, I did. We stopped at a service station along the way, and I was very, very tempted to buy a real horrible Swiss sort of cuckoo clock from the uh, from out of the petrol station. 
but um, something something in my brain stopped me actually. <laughs> well, next next time, whatever trip switch that is, just don't just don't let it just don't let it go. Right? We want All a right, piece yeah. of we, we want a, we want a piece of tap for next time. Uh, and shall I send them to, to your to your own? personal house, Steve? For my own personal use, yes, that would be absolutely <laughs> lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, listen, uh, you've got a, a week off as well next week, don't you? Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm absolutely exhausted and uh, I just want to sit on um, sit on a sit on a beach for a week. So I'm going to stay on in, uh, in Nice in the south of France and and just sort of recharge my batteries before the, imp- the impending nine-week tour of America, okay. which is uh, going to be quite a monster... All right. Well, listen, um, good luck with the rest of the gigs, and we'll speak to you in two or three weeks' time. Uh, yeah. A bit tat-handed, right? Tat in hand. <laughs> tat-handed. Uh, okay. Don't worry, mate. I've got it covered. <laughs> OK. Uh, Guy Berryman, everyone, on the Coldplay Tour Diaries this week. So it's Paddy Smith on Six Music, and it is time once again to uh, check in uh, with a member of Coldplay. This week it is uh, Guy Berryman on the line, who's in Canada, I believe. Hello, Guy. Hi, Steve. Now, last week we were speaking to Will, and uh, you were about to play the Fuji Rock Festival. Yeah. And uh, he was uh, he was anticipating all sorts of uh, backstage back slapping, you hanging out with um, members of the Foo Fighters. Was it was it one big rock and roll party backstage? Uh, it wasn't qu- it wasn't quite like that, unfortunately, because um, we had to get on a train and come and come straight back. But. Um, no, it's it's nice bumping into the Foo Fighters actually because we we we've sort of we've, we've bumped into them on our travels quite a lot over the last uh, couple of years and um, I know Will and and Dave Grohl have become uh, quite good friends. I think it's a drummer thing to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> what yeah. do they talk? They talk about fills. Uh, they probably talk about <laughs> cymbals and uh, <laughs> hi hats and stuff like that. Yeah. But was it um, was it a good gig? I mean, the, the setting because you get to play some amazing festivals, don't you? Uh, these days, Coachella and places like Fuji, which I imagine is just a beautiful place to play. Yeah, it is. I mean, the, the Fuji Rock Festival is actually uh, in the winter. It's a ski resort, so it's sort of in a valley and surrounded by uh, sort of Swiss style uh, log cabins, which is very bizarre when you're in Japan <laughs> to be surrounded by those. And um, it was it was really good, and we we, we were playing. Um, we were playing before the Foo Fighters, which was actually, in some ways, it's quite nice to sort of be to be second, um, you know, rather than headlining because it just kind of takes that pressure off and you can just enjoy it a bit more. So, we actually came off stage having had a really a really good gig. What are, what are the audiences like there? I'm always told that uh, in Japan the audiences are very respectful during the songs. Um, it's a very bizarre experience actually because um, I mean it's good because um, Japanese audiences they, they really listen you know mm. they, they, they are yeah I suppose respectful you know that, that'd be the word because they stand and they listen and then at the end of the song they sort of clap and uh, and then they stop clapping and they're just sort of standing looking at you waiting for the next one so uh, and it's do, quite bizarre but it's you know it's also it's, it's nice as well and uh, do they understand any of chris's ad libs between songs I mean, has he learned any japanese no it's very no. very hard language to learn no. i mean consider we're all, we're almost in a different country you know sometimes every day you know so it's hard to sort of you know you just i mean i i had all these good intentions when we started touring to sort of learn try and speak a bit of a bit of a lingo you know um, wherever wherever we uh Went, but those uh, that, that that idea very quickly fell by the wayside. So you must be an expert now on aeroplane food, are you? Um, <laughs> yep, I've had my fair share of it. Because you were straight off from Fuji, uh, off to Canada, where you are now. Yes, that's correct. And uh, so, wh- um, so, talk us through where where did you go first, and where have you been in the past week? Uh, well, we've been in Canada for about four days. Uh, we've, we've 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 been based in Toronto and. Um, We've just we've put a brand new show together. So um, last night was the first the first night of this of this new production. You know, we've we, we've really sort of uh, redesigned the whole thing. And so we had a couple of days of production rehearsals here. You know, just just you know, getting all the all the lights right and all the cues and stuff. And real sort of technical, boring stuff. Oh, this sounds this sounds great though. So come on, come on, tell us uh, more lasers, less lasers. What have uh, you got? Less lasers. Uh, <laughs> We had one laser before, and now we have zero lasers. But what we do have is um, balloons filled with confetti. Oh, <laughs> the old balloons filled with confetti, Gamba. I'm liking this. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, so they come down when during the encore. 
They no no they actually uh, well I don't want to give too much no, away, yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. they um the 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 they're um I'll give you a hint they're yellow balloons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how how more little literal can we take some of the song yeah. titles? Uh, right, so there's the there's the yellow balloons. Uh, have you got yeah. any screens this time around? Yeah, we've got a, we've got a real big screen. I mean. Uh, we had screens before, but they were uh, they're, they're nothing really in comparison to what we've got now. We've got very large screen behind us, which moves up and down. And do you uh, do, do you have to uh, do you have to be standing in a certain place? Is there an X marks the spot on the stage? Uh, no, not really. We've uh, we, you know we're trying to we're trying to make the show m more dynamic, you know, and so we're, we're really trying to you know try and walk around and move move around a bit more. So we've got these little different areas that we walk to and. There's a section of the show where we actually um, we come down and we do like a little acoustic section right at the, right at the front, just a very low key thing, which kind of breaks the concert up in the middle, which is um, you know it's quite nice because you know we never want people to get bored. You know, I've been to too many concerts, you know, of of bands that I really love, and just you know after about sort of half an hour, 45 minutes, you know, you, you, you've kind of had enough. Mm. And so what we're really trying to do is is really make the show as dynamic and you know. Every song you know, I, has a, diff I, a different look. I, I think there's maybe a space to make some of it more choreographed. Yeah, there's going to be a bit of um, you know dancing and uh, ballet. <laughs> I was I was thinking more of Coldplay do the shadows. If you've got a little bit of space to walk around in, just ma maybe have some sort of walk, some sort of thing where you, got, you're all we've doing something. We've got a bit of a walk. Yeah, we've got little walkways at the side that we can sort of go out and do our rock god things. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to get used to. Um, playing and walking at the same time <laughs> without looking like a zombie and Very singing don't uh, do. yeah and don't forget the singing singing the harmonica playing the uh, yeah yeah i'm multi-talented <laughs> now there's uh, a couple of other things which we must catch up on before we go to the next record uh one is have you got me have you bought me yet which is something we challenged you about three weeks ago i think have you bought me a piece of tat yet proper piece um, of tourist tat something um, from your travels I'd like to say yes, but the honest answer would actually be no. Okay. Nothing. I haven't seen any tat worthy of Steve Lamac yet, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm a, real, a little bit worried now because obviously tat and Lamac rhyme just a bit too well. <laughs> uh, but okay, all right. Well, that's, that's fine as long as you know, as long as you've still got it in your head. And yep. uh, the other thing is, uh, we were told uh, last week uh, by young Mr. Champion uh, that mm. you, do, you do have a football team with shirts. Now he was telling us that you're very nifty on the left wing. Well, it's very kind of him, actually, to say that. Why, are you rubbish? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> totally. But we do have the uh, Coldplay football uh, kit now, okay. comprising of uh, shirts, uh, shorts and socks. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, we'll be official boot sponsors for uh, next uh, season, not once we get it together. Uh, we'll That's have a little bit kind. of a whip round, uh, round here. Uh, so uh, what are you looking forward to for uh, the uh, coming week? Is there anything, I mean, you must obviously just look at the itinerary and think, oh, look, there's just a hundred more dates on here. But is there anything which sticks out for you? Any, any time where you think, oh, I've got a bit of time off there, I'm going to do some record shopping or I'm going to go and have a wander? Well, I, I do have to say, I mean, you know, when, when we sort of left for, to go on this tour, it's nine weeks long and it's by far the longest tour we'll have ever done. And so it, it was slightly daunting. But the way it's all been planned out for us is, is really good. So in those, I mean, in those nine weeks, we're only going to be based in six hotels. So we're kind of doing this thing where we base ourselves in one city mm. and then fly out to the show and then fly back after the show. So there's not too much moving around. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully it will be... Um, quite comfortable for us and you know we'll hopefully get to the end of it do you, but, do you um, sorry i just have to interrupt because it just just reminds me somebody was talking about the foo fighters jet the other day does it say cold play on the side of your jet no it doesn't unfortunately we did try and uh, we did try and do that but um we don't have the same plane uh oh. every time so oh i see right it's not your own personal private jet it's a string of hired in yeah planes. it's like um yeah it's like a like a company that sort of give us planes when we need them okay well, that's right. we haven't quite there's... reached the stage of uh shelling out for our own plane yet there's, there's plenty of time there's plenty <laughs> of time really don't worry about it so yes over the next few days uh, anything uh, penciled in that you're going to be doing well we'll, be, we'll get into new york this evening we've got a show in montreal um and uh, so we're just going to be based in New York for about a week. So it's you know obviously it's it's a great city, and I've spent a lot of time there now. So I'll just be looking forward to um, 
just sort of hanging out there, really. Excellent. So don't forget, go to Bar 2, are you? Have you been there? No. Uh, which is on the, as you'd imagine, uh, it's, in, it's on the corner of uh, Avenue A and 2nd. And oh, it's, right, okay. It's, uh, it's the bar which uh, I, b I believe, I'm not sure if this is still true, but certainly uh, a couple of years ago when I first went there, it was owned by the management of the Strokes. Uh, and uh, they had that before the Strokes took off. And it's just one of these places which is quite a nice place to hang out in. Oh, that's interesting because I know where the Strokes management office is and it's above a bar that I go to which is called Black and White. Ah, Oh, the plot thickens. I'll the tell plot you, thickens. I'll tell you what, will you go down and have a, have a vodka and coke for us down there or something, or a nifty bottle of beer, and yes, check I it will. out for us? Yeah, I'll uh, go and do that for you, Steve. Excellent, that's brilliant. And we'll talk to you uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Yes, you will. All right. And uh, by that time, I will have found you some serious tat. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of opportunity in New York, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, listen, uh, Guy, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, have a really good week, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Steve. Bye for now. And Electricity, originally out on Factory Records, later reissued by Virgin. Not that I guess you really need to know that if you didn't already. Uh, Steve Lamack here till 7 o'clock, and we can now uh, join one of the members of Coldplay. This week it's Guy Berryman. Uh, where are you, Guy? I'm in San Francisco, Steve. OK, so it's New York last week, it's San Francisco this week. Yes. So you've moved on. We've moved across to the other side of the uh, country. OK. Now, tell us, um, tell us some of the things you've been up to. We'll talk about the gigs in a second. Uh, but I hear you've, uh, there is a bit of a keep fit regime, a bit of running. Yeah, well, I'm trying to sort of, uh, you know, w we've done about 10 shows now, and there's another, uh, there's almost 30 left to go. So it's, you know, got to try and get to the end of it without sort of dropping dead of a heart attack. So I've been doing quite a lot of uh, running in rural America, and it's... Uh, proved to be quite an interesting experience actually because you know usually we just go to cities and, and, and we play in venues in town but now we're we're playing in these venues that well they're, they're called sheds which are basically man-made amphitheaters which yeah. are out of town and so um yeah we played in seattle yesterday and uh we, we managed to run through uh like a modern uh, sort of uh, native indian reserve which is not all it's not all wigwams and uh, and and feather hats and stuff like mm. that. It's actually quite it's very depressing, actually, because these people really don't have very much money, mm. and um, so they they just sort of parked up with um, you know the trailers and, and and sort of trucks and stuff like that. And we ended up uh, myself and my friend Dan. We we were chased by a couple of particularly vicious-looking dogs from one end of this uh, area to the other. So. <laughs> We got a bit more exercise than we bargained for yesterday. So, uh, what were you doing? You were just wandering along. Did they set the dogs on you, or did the did the dogs just come of their own accord? No, I just don't think they were used to strangers being, right. you know, sort of, you know, running past past them, and they just decided that they fancied giving chase, and we had to uh, we had to leg it, as it were. It sounds like something from some sort of cartoon capers comedy. Well, it was. I mean, it's quite. I mean. I, you know, we, we don't really sort of get to experience rural, rural America at all. Mm. And um, the, the last few runs that I've, I've, I've been for, um, it was like running through something from a Stephen King novel. It was just all, uh, it was all just uh, fields of corn, you know, mm. sort of st about 10 foot high either side of us. I mean, it was really amazing that, you know, very sort of picturesque. But, um, you know, you don't actually think things like that actually exist until you yeah. get out there and have a look for yourself. So, so how does this work? Do do you get some somebody to uh, to drive you out into the country and then you run back to wherever you're staying, or how does it well, work? Well, all these 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 venues that you know they're, they're described as sheds, these man-made amphitheaters, they're all out of town in the countryside anyway. But because you know they need a lot of these places hold about sort of twenty twenty five thousand people, so there needs to be sort of you know some place where everyone can park. So they're almost, you know, in the countryside themselves anyway. Right, I see. So uh, are you feeling any fitter? Yeah, so I did six miles yesterday. Did you? Yeah, which I think is pretty good. I wouldn't have been able to do that, you know, a few months ago. And have you have you been building yourself up then, starting off and then sort of extending the distance you're running? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just sort of gradually increasing it. So um, you never know, Steve, by the time I uh, come back, I might be putting myself in for the London Marathon. Well, we'd sponsor you. I'm sure there's a couple of people around here. We could raise yeah, a couple of quid. We could, we could uh, yeah, have a whip round. We could, we, I think we could. I think we could definitely do it. Don't leave it too late in the day when you're running back to the venue, though. Otherwise, running past—is that guy? It is. You'll have a whole gang just running after you. Well, actually, you know, 
I mean, I do, you know, I have to run through the sort of car parts and stuff, and not one person has ever recognised me. <laughs> and I think it's just because people don't expect, you know, members of the band to be sort of out there running. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that, that's really not a problem for me at all. So tell us um, briefly about some of the gigs. Uh, we left you, uh, we left uh, Will uh, with a hangover last week in uh, New York. Oh, did you really? Yes, we did. Had to had to raise the poor man from his slumber. Um, but uh, this week, where have you where have you been? Because you were obviously based in New York for a bit. But where have you been playing? You mentioned Seattle. Yeah, we came over to the uh, to the West Coast um, a few days ago, mm. and we've played. Um, Seattle was the first one we, that we've done. Actually, we're playing in Portland tonight, and we've got San Francisco on Friday, and then we're sort of heading down to Los Angeles and San Diego in the next in the next week or so. Okay, and it's, are you uh, as you go through? Have you been changing the set, introducing uh, I don't know new or different songs? Well, you know, we've we've been sort of working it out as we go along. You know, some songs don't really you know go down so well. I think. You know, it's partly because you know the album hasn't been around that long. We were playing a song called "The Hardest Part," mm. um, and it was just kind of like it was just not not really happening. So we 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 swapped that around for uh, an older song, uh, "A Rush of Blood to the Head," which you know people sort of know. But um, you know, it's just kind of like fine tuning it really, and um, just trying to trying to read people's reactions and 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 trying to make it as you know just maximise the you know the the effect of the set list every night. Is there, I mean, I don't know whether you can actually see this but or whether you can sense this when you're on stage, but is there any sort of geographical difference in people's tastes from one coast to another? Um, not really, no. I mean, I think you really notice, you, you notice difference, differences when you go from sort of continent to continent rather than state to right, state. Right. Um, I mean, people have been really, you know, extremely extremely hospitable to us over here and you know this seems to be going down really well so you know if, if every if every show on this tour is as good as it's been so far then i'll be a very happy man excellent well listen there's only one last question i have to ask you yes have you got my piece of tat yet yes i'm holding <laughs> it right now in front of me I don't know whether I want to ask you to what it is or whether I just want it as a surprise. Can you just give me, I'll tell you what, now you've got it, uh, I'll try and guess what it is. But just give us one clue each time, OK? So just give us give us a clue uh, okay. as, as to what it is. Uh, is it, um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think, Cannot, could I hold it in my hands, obviously? You could. I could hold it in my hands. Do I get one more guess? Uh, one more guess. Uh, is it... Uh, uh, soft, but not very, very soft. Hmm. Okay, all right, I'm going to think. <laughs> and I'm going to try and guess what it is. Listeners, if you can help me out, it's in my hands. It's soft, but not that soft. Uh, Guy, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Hopefully we'll catch up with you again in a couple of weeks' time. Good luck with uh, your athletics career. I can't believe uh, you don't know what it, You don't want to know what it is? No, I don't want to know. For two weeks I'm going to be thinking about this. Keep okay. me in suspense, all right? But I'm going to have another one for you next week, though, Steve. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, right, I'll guess, the, I'll, guess, I'll guess this one next time round and then we'll take it from there. Fantastic. All right, <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh. And thank you very much. Whatever it is, I'm very chuffed. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Steve. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Guy from Coldplay, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause, I think. <laughs> one to another by the Charlatans. It's uh, Six Music, Thursday afternoon, it's Steve Lamack, and uh, for the final time on this tour at least, it's the Coldplay Rhythm Section Tour Diaries, this week with Guy Berryman. How are you? Not too bad, Steve. I've got a bit of a uh, end of tour cold at the yeah. moment. I think it's uh, finally catching up with me now. So what, it, what is it? You haven't been taking your vitamins or it's too many late nights? I've been taking loads of vitamins, but I suppose there's been a few late nights as well. Right. But, um, oh God, I don't know, I'm just desperate to come home now. Are you? Does it? I mean, does it get like that now? When you can you can you see the um, like the finishing line though? Yeah, I mean, we've got we've got a show tonight, a show tomorrow, and a show the day after, and then it's and then we're back home. But um, we st when we started this tour about ten weeks ago in Japan, I, I mean, that just seems like it was ten years ago. Now. Mm. It's uh, it's been a long one. <laughs> but what have the uh, highlights been since we last spoke uh, recently over the last I suppose three or four weeks actually since we last had a proper conversation? It, been a while, yes. Um, well, we just done the um, Austin City Limits Festival, which was good. And um, what was it like? I mean, because obviously the, you had to cancel a gig last week because of the uh, appalling weather. Yeah, we cancelled the show in uh, Houston um, because they'd evacuated the city. But as it happened, it didn't. Um, it didn't get 
affected too much and you know so we would have been okay weather-wise to play but uh, the trouble is everyone left the city so I don't think many people would have turned up. Wouldn't have had an audience no. And uh, uh, Will was saying last week that Austin is usually a great place for you. Austin's amazing we've um, we've just sort of had our end of tour party and uh, it's Austin's lovely because it's got this big river that runs through it and it's got lakes and stuff so uh, we were all sort of uh, messing around on boats and doing water skiing and uh, being dragged around on rubber rings a few days ago, which was uh, which was good fun. That's probably where you got your cold, young man, I guess. Well, uh, that's possible. <laughs> so, and what was your end of... So where did you have your end of tour party then properly? It was in... Um, well, we actually did quite a good trade because there's this um, young couple who have this uh, this big house uh, on, a, on, a, on the lake and we swapped them a few tickets for the festival for in return that we could borrow their house for the day. So I think we uh, we got a slightly better deal. <laughs> I hope you left it in a, uh, in a tidy condition, as you found it, as they say. Well, actually, I had to, it, it, it didn't end so well the day because um, Vicky, our assistant, she was swimming and um, I think she had a shawl or something that she, she laid down on the grass um, before she went into the swimming pool. And when she came back out she put this shawl back on which was full of fire ants <gasps> and so she got bitten about 25 times and we had to she actually had a really bad reaction to it so i, I, I spent the evening with her in hospital and uh, which was uh not quite the way uh I planned the day to go. No, not at all. Well, I mean, I suppose at least you can say uh, to people when they ask, how was the end of tour party? Well, I'll just say this, I ended up in hospital. Uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, I'll leave it as that, yeah. Now, listen, uh, because this is the uh, last of uh, our little phone conversations, we've got to catch up on some unfinished business, yeah. because uh, the last time I spoke to you, you'd bought us some... Ta- I, I've, uh, listeners, if you've never heard one of these uh, tour diaries before, I've been goading Guy into trying to buy me just some tat... Um, on tour, and you'd bought some, yeah. and but you hadn't told us what it was. Now, I've guessed so far um, that I think what was the clue? It's it's soft or something. It's light or it's soft. Yes, I can't quite remember what I told you. Well, look, <laughs> and you would be quite correct in that assumption. Excellent. You've bought me some toilet roll. Yes. Okay. Any particular sort of special American toilet roll? Well, it was actually, I got it in a joke shop. It was, uh, it was a toilet roll which uh, is full of um, Bushisms, I suppose, and pictures of George Bush, which is maybe not the most uh, politically correct thing to be uh, discussing on the radio. But that's that's the that's the piece of tat. That's the present. Yeah, and I got you another another piece of tat as well from. Have you? I did. And, and you know, well, you better tell us what it is because I've got no more time to guess. Or well, you, give I'm, us a clue. I'm, I'm, there's a lot of places in New York um, that sell um, movie scripts on the streets. Right. And so I bought you um, the script for uh, Taxi Driver. Yeah, because no. I fancied, uh, I, I, I thought you might fancy yourself as a, uh, a bit of a Robert De Niro figure and uh, standing in the mirror and whatnot. So I've now got you the, uh, the script to do that. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're uh, welcome. I'll, I'll, come guess... and I'll come and drop it off when I get back. Yeah, no, do do come in. Oh, we'll find something. I'll have to find as, something as well as the loo roll. Yeah, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, yes I, I dare say as soon as that a- arrives in the building, uh, the uh, digital camera will be out. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, it's all good, and uh, you're off uh, coming back soon, but um, you've been announcing tour dates all the way along, so you're going to be pretty busy up till Christmas anyway, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, and I've just... Um... I've just read this morning on uh, NME.com that we've just announced our Australian tour as well, which is uh, which was a little bit of a surprise to me. No one, no one keeping you updated with that one. No one keeps me no. updated. No, okay. As long as you, as long as you're there, exactly. as long as you play, then that's all right. And I, I, I must apologise for um, missing our last um, conversation, Steve. I do uh, have a slight confession to make. Go on. I did hear the phone ring. At about one thirty in the afternoon, but oh, um, I decided not to answer it because I'd literally uh, gone to bed about five minutes before, and I didn't think I would uh, make a lot of sense to you. So uh, I always say, would you win the award then for the most rock and roll member of the band on this tour? Um, I've actually not been too bad. There's been a few late nights, but I think um, 
I think that night was um, the day that we were supposed to speak was after the Madison Square Garden show. So that's obviously, um, you know, New York's always a, a, a sure bet for getting caught. It was a case of um, bad timing, I think. Okay, no, don't worry. Having uh, been out in New York myself recently and been with some friends who, uh, while I copped off to bed about uh, one o'clock, half one in the morning, they were apparently still trying to convince a DJ in an Irish bar at half past four that he should carry on until dawn. Ah, so there you go. Uh, well, listen, Guy, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and thank you very much for um, being on the line every fortnight for, throughout uh, the tour. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you back in the UK. Yes, I shall look forward to uh, being back in the UK. All very right. much so. Have a safe trip back, mate. Thanks, Steve. Take care. Bye for now.